start off uh, it's like you're eating a piece of food. All right. So what happens during digestion? I don't want to know about food. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So whenever you actually put food in your mouth, you're beginning the digestion process. So at that point, you're physically by chewing, breaking it down, and chemically with saliva breaking it down. That's where. We're actually doing our experiment with amylase. So amylase is starting to break down uh, starches in your mouth. So at this point, you've converted the food, and it's now known as bolus. All right. So then the bolus is going to go down past your your pharynx. Your pharynx is basically kind of removed the throat here. So here you can see the. Uh, this is actually the. Epiglottis, which lays over the trachea when you swallow food. Food goes over the epiglottis, epiglottis and into your esophagus, dorsal here. All right. So, chewing up food, turning into bolus, you're swallowing. It goes goes through your pharynx, which is basically just the back of your throat where your uh, trachea and esophagus meet, and into your esophagus. It's going to travel down the esophagus through peristaltic action. If you remember that, where some parts are going to be opening while another con uh, contracts, yeah. pushing the food down. Same things happening in your intestines. That's why you can swallow something while doing a handstand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try it. So, food going down your esophagus into your stomach here, stomach down here. We've cut it open to expose the the ridges inside, called the rugae. So it's just like the little folds and ridges inside. That's called rugae. Mm -hmm. All right. In, in order to get to your stomach, though, it has to pass through the sphincter called the gastroesophageal sphincter or cardiac. Most people remember cardiac. So that's where your esophagus meets your stomach, which you can't really see up here. So that's your cardiac sphincter. Then it's kind of up here. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to be able to ask that. Okay. <laughs> so then in your stomach. Uh, both physical and chemical uh, breaking down is going to occur because your stomach is actually contracting and churning, and you you know there's a high acidity and, and enzymes in there continuing to break it down. And at this point, as the food passes out of your stomach and into your small intestine, it's called chyme, no longer bolus, chyme, C H Y M E. And in order to get into your small intestine, it has to pass through another sphincter, the pyloric sphincter. So that's where your duodenum, the first part of your small intestine, attaches to your stomach. So coming down esophagus, you have the cardiac sphincter into the stomach, then churned up in the stomach, and then through the pyloric sphincter into the duodenum. The duodenum is the first part of your small intestine, and this is where the majority of actual uh, uptake and, and, and breaking down occurs. Okay. And here, this little area, this kind of membranous organ that connects all your small intestines to your stomach, mm -hmm. that is your pancreas. So all your pancreatic enzymes are made there. Okay. And also, here in your liver, I don't know if you see this little green spot? Mm -hmm. That's your gallbladder, which is dumping bile into your duodenum. So that's your liver? Yep. Yeah, this is your liver here, and this is your gallbladder. And we, all right, I'm going to go through those in a sec. All right, so at this point, we're in the duodenum, just went through the pyloric sphincter, traveling along. Most of the digestion and uptake is going to occur here. Then you get to the middle area, called your jejunum. And then finally to the end of your small intestine, which is the ileum. And there's not like discrete boundaries, it's just... Your duodenum is the beginning. That's where the majority of the uptake and digestion is happening. Then you get to your jejunum and ileum. There's still absorption occurring, but it's just you need to know the majority is in your duodenum. Then here, this is your large intestine. The first back part of your large intestine here is called the cecum. Okay? So this is your ileum. This is your cecum. There's a valve here, the ileocecal valve. So, passing from the small intestine into the large intestine, you go through the ileocecal valve into the cecum. And that's important 
because once the your food is in your large intestines, then it's considered feces at that point. And there's a lot more bacteria, especially E. coli, really nasty stuff in your large intestine that's not in your small intestine. So you don't want any of that backtracking. Okay? Which is another thing in your cook <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Which is another thing I wanted to say. Here the cardiac sphincter is if if there's too much at, you know, contents in your stomach and acid buildup, when it passes up into your esophagus, that is what? Acid reflux. Acid, acid reflux. So that's what's going on there. Alright. So we're in the cecum. From there, you go down into the colon and then to the rectum. In, in humans, we have an ascending, transverse, descending, and then sigmoid colon. They don't really have that detail here in the cat. We just go cecum, colon, rectum, and then out through the anus. And the anus is actually skeletal muscle it, where you can actually contract it. So that's why, that's what they say, uh, babies have to learn how to use that muscle whenever they're first born. Okay. All right. Now let's just go through some stuff that I might have jumped over. This is your liver. We said that's the gallbladder. Spleen down here on the side. Spleen. This whole sheet is called your greater omentum, and that just kind of lays over. Is it your, usually like? Yeah, it's usually solid? connected. Yeah, it's usually solid. It's all tore up. Uh, this here is, is a muscle. It's your diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we kind of cut it. And then if you look real close, that white nerve yeah. is a phrenic nerve. Phrenic. Phrenic. P h r e n i c, I believe. That's your, that innervates the diaphragm. And then, of course, you have your heart here. It's sitting in uh, the pericardial sac. And then your lungs. Okay? Tiny lungs. Right. And, we're, and next week we're going to go over uh, oxygen uptake, breathing as well. But, oh, and also for the linings, uh, you have two types. There's two types of two types of linings. It's kind of weird. You have visceral linings which line organs and then you have linings that line the actual cavity itself. That being, so this is visceral and this is parietal on the side of it. That being said, you also have linings in the thoracic cavity, pleura, and linings in the abdominal cavity, peritoneum. So the lining here, the walls of the thoracic cavity would be parietal pleura, and the linings of, say, the lungs would be visceral pleura. And then here the lining, what lines the small intestines? Visceral peritoneum. Peritoneum. peritoneum, and then what lines the actual walls of that Pri cavity? Parietal Pri peritoneum. Yes. So that that can be a little confusing. Yeah. Okay. All right, and I want to go through it one more time, real quick. Sure. What's that pink stuff? Uh, they dye veins red and uh, no veins blue and arteries red oh. with this latex, but we don't look at uh, that. Does the trachea lie on top or the bottom? Yeah, the trachea is is uh, <laughs> ventral. Ventral, yeah. So you go over the epiglottis into the esophagus. That's why you're not supposed to talk while you eat because you would be breathing while swallowing and that food would fall into your trachea and then you start freaking out. <laughs> start freaking out. All right. Okay. So take a bite of food. You're chewing it up. You're physically and chemically converting it to bolus. As you swallow it, it goes through your pharynx into the esophagus, down the esophagus, all the way here to your stomach. But in order to get there, it has to go through the cardiac sphincter. Stomach, more physical and chemical digestion occurs, converting that bolus to chyme. Rugae, the ridges in the stomach is called rugae. Uh, also, you have a really uh, high acidity with pH of like 2 in your stomach. And then whenever the chyme goes into the duodenum, it goes through the pyloric sphincter. And there's a lot of alkaline substances in there that neutralize the pH. So a lot of the 
enzymes that are on the sheet will become active. So like the pepsinogen will be will become activated pepsin and start breaking down uh, different things. All right. So stomach through the pyloric sphincter into the duodenum, along the duodenum to the jejunum in the middle here, along the jejunum, finally to the ileum, ileum through the ileocecal valve into the cecum. There's a lot of bacteria in here. Down, down the colon to the rectum, and then out through the anus. So we're not going to have to know the transverse colon and the... I mean, you just know, yeah, that humans have that, but I can't. I'm not going to say, what is that? Well, that's transverse colon. Okay, come on. Can't do that. All right? Any questions?